life when I was a kid. I remember that mug like it was yesterday. I was nine years old. I was sitting on the couch one day and I was watching Punk. If you were nineties baby or early two thousands kid, then you know what I'm saying. You know what that show is. Anywho, so I was sitting on the couch watching that on the big TV. Back then we didn't have like skinny TVs. We had like the big fat TVs with the donks on them. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if the TV started twerking, bro. Bang, 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 bang. Reload. Back then I was very impressionable. That means I was easily influenced. So after watching Punk, you know they do a lot of pranks on that show. I decided mm, maybe I could do the same thing, you know? It would be pretty cool, pretty fun. Problem is though, I did it on the wrong people. I decided to do it on my black, strict, old school parents. Like you could have did it on your brother. You could have did it on your sister. Shoot, you could have did it on somebody like the, the neighbors or something, but you decided to do it on the same people that could take away your games, take away your dignity, take away your pride, take away everything. The elaborate prank that my nine-year-old brain had back then was to call the cops and hang up. Like, I don't know what I was smoking back then, but I might need some of that now, because you're not even pranking your parents, fool. You're pranking yourself at that point, and you were going to get in trouble for it, so it's a double-edged sword. Like, I didn't even think that through. Why, why did you not... <laughs> Stupid. That night, my dad was at work. My mom was in the kitchen making food. So I found this the right opportunity to go ahead and start the operation. So I peek around the corner. I see mom in the kitchen getting down, whipping that chicken, putting the foot in the grits. I'm like, mm-hmm, she's distracted. Time for the cobra to strike. So I go sneak the house phone into my room. And just know I had zero knowledge about phones back then because like we had a house phone, a house phone, two in fact, if you know, you know. My whole thought process of this was, okay, I'm gonna get the phone and then I'm gonna call the cops, hang up immediately. I just wanted to see what would happen. I thought the call wouldn't even go through if I called the number and hang up in a matter of milliseconds. That's why I was so confident in this whole operation. I thought I would get out scotch-free just for the simple fact that I really thought in my brain that the call wouldn't even go through. Now this is where she get wicked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm back in my room. I get the phone. I dial 911. I hang up immediately. Now we wait. Five minutes later, the phone rings again. And literally milliseconds before I can answer the phone, guess who picks up? The minute my mama picked up that phone, I knew it was game over because I forgot. We have two house phones. So that means when anybody called our house, both phones would ring. When that phone rang and I saw that the phone got picked up somewhere else, bro, I swear my heart left this planet. So I hit the dizzy dash to the living room, right? I peek around the corner. I see my mom in the kitchen. She talking to the cops. They're like, ma'am, is everything all right? We just got a call from this address not too long ago, and we just wanted to see if everything was all right. No, I think you've made a mistake. Oh, shit! Oh, shit. My mama put the pieces of the puzzle together so fast, bruh. She hang up the phone. She turn around. She spot me. She like, I'm telling your father. <laughs> Dang, mama, you a op now. I can't even go back to Grove Street. My dad gonna be on the block looking for me. Because of you, my GTA stars went from one to five. I don't think y'all understand. I lived in a household where my mom didn't really have an effect on me when she was punishing me. So when she knew her punishments wouldn't get through to me, she would call my dad for backup. Cause she knew he would finish the job. I'm over here crying and pleading to her. Ah, mama, please don't tell dad. Blah, 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 blah. That shit didn't work. Cause she was like, mm -mm, you finna get mixed up as soon as your father get home. He gonna show you what I packed him for lunch. Buildables. So I hit the Duzzy Dash back to the room, right? I'm crying all night. I'm thinking to myself like, oh my God. it's over with life, I'm gone. Cause like dog, my mama whoopings did not hurt. My dad's did. You gotta understand, this man was all might. The black version, the man was big buddy, big buddy, big buddy. Man's was really built like a Baki character. Being a nine year old back then, that nigga was scary. So with all the fear running through my veins that entire night, after I woke up in the morning the next day, I came up with an elaborate scheme to try to let the situation situation simmer down into something by you know doing everything before he gets home in the morning like cleaning up i'm talking about spotless everything dishes 
room, bathroom, went outside, cut the grass. I even thought about going next door and walking the neighbor's dog. Man, it was so clean, I even let the cockroaches roam free. I even thought about going outside and washing the car. That's how bad I did not want to get that punishment. I did all that and more so that maybe, just maybe, he'll have a change of heart. I get all that done. I hop in the tub. I'm ducking down like it's warfare. I don't know what's going to happen. Next thing I know, 10 minutes later, I hear a car pull up. And then two minutes later, I hear the door open. And then 30 seconds later, I hear the door go boom. You already know who it is. And you know what that means. All that cleaning up, all that hoping was in vain.